Hi traders, welcome to this video. In this video, I'm gonna be interviewing a very well-known trader, Karen Fu. Karen has over 400,000 subscribers on YouTube and once ranked number one in a trading competition. And today she shares her story with us, how she became a successful trader and top tips and lessons for beginners. So make sure you stick around for this one. I hope you enjoy the whole video and the whole interview with Karen. It's a really inspiring story. Hi Karen, could you tell me a little bit about yourself? What was your sort of background? Have you always been interested in finance and trading? So my parents, they are stock investors ever since I was born. They are already full-time stock investors. So my dad, is uh, he's just working at home all the time from Monday to Friday because he's a full-time investor. Then my mom also invests in stocks on the side. So every single day they were talking about stocks when I was younger. So I grew up with them, you know, just watching about, uh, watching CNBC, CNN on TV sometimes. Then, because back then I was so young, then I wasn't that interested in it because like, you know, I was still in play school, primary school. Like, then I'm like, why would people watch this boring stuff? I just want to play my games. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I, I was so young, I was just playing my games and I was playing toys and all that stuff, just like any typical children. And then around secondary school, then I started to ask about it. Okay, mm. just ask about it. I didn't really commit to learning it. So I was just like, that was this thing that you are doing every day. Of course, I was curious too when I was younger. I did ask about, about the stock market. Mm -hmm. Uh, with my dad when I was in primary school, once in a while I would go into his office and then be like, so what's this that you're looking at on screen? There are so many numbers, like it goes red and green, red and green, right? Then he was like, well, these are actually companies you can buy and if you buy the right one, then you can make a lot of money. Then I was like, oh, really? Then I told him one thing. I was like, <laughs> I like the ones that are red colored. Then he's like, oh my God. <laughs> because like we all know, right? If we want to buy a stock that uh, makes us money. It has to be green most of the time. Then like, I like all the ones that are red color, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then he's probably thinking like, oh no, my child is not a prodigy in stock market. Um, but then it's okay because in secondary school, like high school, then I started to ask more about it. Then he started to teach me, you know, uh, stocks is a company, a share that you can buy and then eventually you can also earn dividends from it. And this is the annual report, this is the balance sheet. Then you can look at the management, then you can look at the company performance. Then I was like, oh, this is interesting, interesting. Then at around like 13, 14, I was watching, I started to watch CNN, CNBC, even though I didn't understand a lot of things that they were talking about, mm -hmm. like what's index ETF, then people are talking about like shorting, then long, then like what, what is that? But I still kept watching. So at 13, 14, I was watching those kind of channels, but also watching cartoons. So it's a weird mix, I know. And then, and then I also watched Donald Trump a lot back then. I don't know if you know this show called The Apprentice. Uh, yes, yeah. It's a bit different over here in England, yeah. But um, yeah, there's a, The Apprentice UK, there's a The Apprentice uh, US. Yeah, yeah. So I watched the US. Well, I didn't know there's a UK version. Mm -hmm. So I watched the one on TV. All yeah. the time, which is the one which Donald Trump is the boss or C or, or the host. Mm -hmm. Then, for some reason, I was really inspired by him back then because I always wanted to be my own boss. Okay. Always wanted to be my own boss. Then, in after high school, I really didn't know what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Just like any, just like most of the typical high school kids, like graduate from high school, don't know what you really want in life. Then I tried out many different things. I took a gap year and I tried out very uh, different types of jobs. I tried being a cashier. Then I tried being okay. a sales assistant. Then I also was an assistant engineer because I studied science. Then I tried different things. Then eventually I was like, you know what? How come I don't like, don't like any of these things? Then it's a very long journey. So I applied to... National University of Singapore to study architecture. And then they, okay. they accepted me mm -hmm. for, for the program. 
then in my first week, I realized that, you know what, even though I loved drawing when I was younger, it didn't translate to a passion for architecture. Uh, because I was young back then, so I didn't know like what I really want in life. So I tried yeah. architecture. Then uh, when the professor said, you know what, this is the first week of school. If you want to quit, you still can. Then I'm like, okay, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> then, then I was like, yeah, really super thankful for him for saying that. If not, I wouldn't quit architecture. Okay, so you could have gone a completely different path. I would have continued for four years with lack right. of sleep and then like <laughs> being an architect right now, a miserable architect right now. <laughs> but architect is a very good profession, just that it's not mm. my passion. Then I dropped out of it, which is, uh, in a way, it sounds ungrateful because mm. the uni gave me an opportunity, but then I dropped out. Then I took uh, one gap year. And yep. in that one gap year, it, super, it was super life-changing for me because in that time, I also learned how to speak confidently because I was very quiet and shy in school. So I trained myself in public speaking in that year. But I also tried different jobs like being a financial trainer for school. So I trained little school kids, primary school kids about personal finance. Okay, cool. Yeah. You know, like what's a tax, what's a credit yeah, yeah. card. So I teach kids those and also high school kids. All right. And That's cool. And they're actually pretty fun to teach. Pretty yeah, yeah. fun to teach. Just that right now I focus more on adults. Then after becoming a financial trainer in that gap year, I realized, you know what? I like this. Mm-hmm. I actually like this. I like preparing the slides about personal finance. I like reading about it. I'm like, you know what? Let me go back to uni. And then I went to this university called Nanyang Technological University. Okay, in, in, in Singapore, NTU yeah. for sure. So I pursued a degree in banking and finance. That's where I studied all the stock market, then derivatives, then economics, then currency, statistics. Even statistics is super hard for me. Yeah. Super hard. But my favorite subject back then was economics and I enjoyed a lot. Then I also studied futures options, lots of things. And also during that time, I also had the opportunity to go to a lot of the investment banks in Singapore, their trading floors. So I will go to their trading floors and then look at like their trading desks and they got like tons of screen, like one person, they got like one, two, three, four, five, six, like six. <laughs> yeah. big monitors on there. I'm like, wow, that's amazing, inspiring. Then I get to talk to a lot of Goldman Sachs traders, then like... Uh, there are a couple of investment banks I went to. I forgot. Uh, JP Morgan, I also went to their office to mm-hmm. check out the place. Super nice. Then in my final year, my professor told me to represent my university in a trading competition. Then I'm like, you know what? It's my final year. Let me make my university proud. I didn't, awesome. really, I didn't really go into that competition thinking like, you know what? I want to become a trading guru so that's why I need to join this competition Mm -hmm, I didn't I didn't plan to teach did not plan to teach at all so I just you know what I was just like you know what this is my final semester let me just go for it if I lose then I lose with dignity so I went to the pre-competition briefing and I was like oh my god like all these kids from other universities and schools they just look so smart. Then I'm like, oh my god, I cannot. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, you know what? If I lose, then I lose. At least I can learn something from it. So I just sat there and I looked at other people. Then I just took down some notes, what to take note of during the competition. Then traded for about three to four months. Then there was an award ceremony. Then I went there, didn't expect to win. So when they announced third prize, it's not my name. Then I'm like, okay, gone, no more, no more. I was ready to leave. Then after it's announced the comprise, I think it's from SMU, another university, or NTU from the same uni. Then I'm like, okay, whoever's the first, congratulations to him or her. Yeah. Then first, first prize, they announced my name. It's very surprising because I was competing with the traders and finance students from the whole of Singapore. So there were a couple of schools that were competing, five, five universities, I think, five universities, then five polytechnics, then some other private 
uh, Yiddish. Wow. And I was thankful for that. It's not easy because uh, people see the success. Yeah. But way before that, I had two training mentors. Mm -hmm. Then I read like 50 plus. I was really young back then. I read 50 plus trading books. Wow. Then I, I, I practiced hours and hours and hours on my chart. Like during weekends and holidays while my friends are going out and enjoying themselves. I was back testing on my charts. Awesome. Back, from morning until night time. I remember back testing. Just looking at the chart. It's very tiring. Mm -hmm. And people don't see the hard work that I put in. Yeah. So people get that. Uh, number one is not easy then after that I went on to rank number 10 which is not super super good but it's number 10 out of 3000 traders in an international contest so there are traders from US, UK all around the world 3000 traders and I rank number 10 I think that's and very good <laughs> that is very good because I think because like I've ranked number 1 then I expect yeah. myself to get at least like top 5 then I was Rank number 10, I'm like, oh my god, you suck, Karen Fool, you suck. Then I'm like, then I'm like, you know what? I should become grateful of this. Then when I've gotten all these competition wins, then people started to ask me to teach. Mm -hmm. So in the first five requests, I said no, because that's not what I plan for. I just want to become a full-time trader and investor. That's it. Okay. Then when people kept asking them, like, you know what, let me just open, open a class, temporary class, class, then teach people. Then after that, for some reason, then uh, the word spread. Then the trading events start to invite me to speak. Uh, even though I don't earn money from it, I still do it. But then, like, this is how it all started. My trading. And That's incredible. Would you say that you're... Um... You're you're a natural teacher then because you've you've kind of did some kind of teaching earlier in your career. You might just have that natural thing to to want to teach. I wish I was natural because like <laughs> <laughs> I was so awkward because you know um just now I told you I right, I was such a shy kid mm -hmm. and and I would say socially awkward kid back then because in high school there was a. My, my class was like 60 people. And of course, they are like oral tests once in a while, right? Right. I'm sure the school also has like oral tests. Everybody could finish the speech except for me. All right. I was that bad because yeah. I was bullied in school since kindergarten, then continued until primary school, then continued until high school. I just get bullied so many times because I was quiet. That's it. Right. I was quiet. So... When people keep saying that, oh, you're quite quiet, you cannot talk, then it yeah. ends up that, okay, since I cannot talk, then what more public speaking? So that's why I could not even finish a speech back then. That's why I told you before this, I trained myself in public speaking way before I started becoming a financial trainer. Before that, right? Before that, every single year, I had the public speaking mentor teaching me like it was a very grueling process. I joined tons of public speaking competitions and lost a lot of them. Only won a few after hours of training and practice. I practice in front of mirror like so many times that I cannot even count. People don't see the hard work I put in. So that's amazing. My, like, you, my brother is a natural, but yeah. I'm not. Because oh. in primary school, he represented the school to win a public speaking competition. <laughs> The teachers came to me and be like, so that's your brother, right? How come he's so good and you are like that? Then I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> then I'm like oh, maybe it's just that I'm not good enough. I'm, I had super low confidence. Maybe I'm just like not as good as my brother. Maybe I'm just not smart. Maybe I'm just not talented enough, just like him. So yeah, it took a long time, long time. Yeah, but it just shows how uh, how resilient you are as a character, though, to come out, out come through sort of adversity and then recognize you sort of you need to be better at it and then go and go and get it. And I think that can relate to trading in so many different ways because a lot of people will jump right in, lose a lot of money, and then they won't look at themselves as well. I need to change something, and you know, go get the help maybe. 
um, beforehand and then kind of change themselves in in that way so I, I commend you for that that is you know absolutely brilliant and um, so would you say that was kind of like you know would you would you trade in fx in that competition as well so because i know you talked a little bit about learning with your finance degree about sort of futures and options and things like that was was fx sort of in with that as well or was fx just something that you you kind of was drawn towards in that competition for that competition it was a forex trading competition but you were okay. you were also allowed to trade gold and commodities Okay. So in that competition, I traded forex and also gold a lot. Okay. So that's okay. Brilliant. Brilliant. So that's that. Then kind of, I suppose, inspired you to continue to go with forex after that. Yep. Okay. Nice. 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 So, what did you do, sort of, after that? Then was it like, um, did you go straight diving into your own sort of personal trading, or was that sort of it for you? Did you go away from it for a little bit, or did you go just just dive straight in? For forex or for yeah, commodities? just start forex trade, didn't you? Yeah, so I started with stock market. Okay. Uh, just like my parents. Mm -hmm. Then that I added FX. Actually, I, I I started with stocks, then followed by gold, then forex. Okay. So this trading right now. Okay, nice, nice, nice. So, what would you say was your sort of biggest challenge when you first got started? Oh, biggest challenge. Um, there were a lot of challenges in my first year of opening a live account. Actually, in my first year, I didn't open a very big live account. I just opened like a hundred, two hundred dollars. Okay. But then losing even like I don't know why ten dollars, five dollars back then, even though it's not significant, it's a uh, very demoralizing for some reason because I went to so so many different seminars back then. Before I become a trading teacher, I went to so many trading seminars and a lot of them sell me this idea that forex trading is easy, you can make money fast, you don't need to put in, put in a lot of work, then you can somehow buy your BMW <laughs> in six months. Yeah. Then he, I remember one guy, he shot his car, then he bought his dad a car, then I'm like, wow, so easy. Then he was just like, you know what, you just follow my instructions. When this thing turns green, you buy. When this thing turns red, you sell. You can make tons of money, yes or no? Then I'm like, yes. Then I tried it. Actually, I didn't buy his course back then because thankfully my credit card was declined. All right. My credit card was declined because back then, uh, I think it was just out of high school. Didn't yeah. have a lot of money. Didn't have a lot of money back All then. Right. Yeah. And then uh, it was declined. Then I didn't join his course, but I kept having this idea of oh, this trading guru says that trading is uh, so lucrative so let me try it i put hundred dollar two hundred dollar then lost everything mm -hmm. lost everything then uh, it was really demoralizing uh, demoralizing then i stopped trading for three to four months okay then after that after that i went back to it when my mentor encouraged me to you know what losses are part of the process i'm like really i thought the trading guru says that you will win 99% of the time. Then he's like, We no. wish. <laughs> I, I wish, I wish, I wish. <laughs> because my mentor is a full time investor and trader. So he's mm -hmm. real and he's not a public trading guru. So he's, he knows what is the reality. So yeah. that's why being a mentor back then really helped me. And yeah, that's, that's, that's basically that. Okay, cool. So you kind of got drawn in very similar way to a lot of other retail traders do. You saw the the car and yep. the sort of the materialistic things and then very much got taken in by that. But in reality, it's quite the opposite. Reality is different, yep. Yeah, absolutely. Actually nowadays, actually nowadays right, I'm sure you know this too, John. Um, losses are the best lessons. Okay. Losses try to use their best lessons because a lot of traders, when they win trades, when they get a winning trade, uh, they, we don't learn from it because mm -hmm. when it's a winning trade, we'll be like, oh, okay, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then when we lose money, we'll sit back and be like, 
why they have lose money. Mm. So after that, we we'll learn the lesson from there. So nowadays, uh, we should take losses as a lesson rather than a failure. Okay. Rather than a failure, as long as our wins cover our losses in the long term, it's like revenue exceeding your expenses. Mm. And then at the end of the year, you end up with a profit. As long as you have a proven strategy, then you'll be confident that you know what this loss is just temporarily. Okay, it yeah. won't affect my year-end profit because I'm still gonna make a profit anyway because yeah. I am confident that my strategy works. Okay, so, cool. So that's a good point that you just said there. You analyze your losses over your winners. Do you think it's important as a beginner to do that? Yeah, it is. A lot yeah. of beginners they also don't. Uh, a lot of beginners when they lose money they would tend to think that trading is a scam or a gamble. They'd be, they'd be like, you know what? I lost so much money. It's a scam or a gamble. But the truth is that most beginners, because they don't take enough time to learn the stock market or forex market properly, then that's why they lose so much money. A lot of beginners, they just focus on strategy. What's the best strategy in the world? And then they don't focus on risk management a lot. But ironically, risk management is what hedge fund traders focus on a lot of times. And most beginner retail traders don't focus on that. So they need to put in the time and patience to learn before they can open a life account. Yeah. Yeah. So would you say applying risk management was this thing that turned your trading around after you started your small account you went on to the was the trading competition sort of after that um and then you've kind of opened your own account would you say that was the difference to you sort of becoming profitable was it the the side of risk management rather than overall obviously the strategy helps as well but the risk management side of things is is more important would you say yeah because uh that's one very, very interesting incident. I was using the same strategy, okay? Mm -hmm. Back then in my first one, two years, a uh, strategy taught me by my mentor is a gold trading strategy. So I was using, using this strategy that has a very high win rate, high win rate. But then back then, because I didn't manage my risk pro properly, in my first six months using that strategy, I make a lot in the first month, then after that, I lose everything. But then after that, I focus more on risk management. The strategy is still the same. Then I became profitable. So if you put the training strategy as a constant, you realize that, you know what, the changing variable that makes you profitable is risk management. And when I say this to beginner trainers, a lot of them, they just brush it off because mm -hmm. they still feel like strategy is everything. You can have a 90% win rate strategy and you still lose money if you don't manage your risk properly. That's why I found out. Because my strategy back then was 90%, 95% win rate, in fact. Nice. But because I didn't manage my risk properly, still lose money. Yeah. And then on the other hand, I can use a strategy right now that has a 40 to 50% win rate mm. only. But if I manage my risk properly, I can still make money, make more money as compared to the 90% win rate strategy that I don't uh, implement proper risk management on. So okay. risk management is really important. And most traders, they only learn this the hard way only after they lose a lot of money. Yeah. 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 What, what yeah. would you have one tip with regards to risk management that somebody could apply to their trading? What would you say would be sort of the most sort of useful tip that you've got? Most useful tip. Understand your risk appetite. Okay. So your own personality. Yeah, your own trading personality. Because your risk appetite will determine what kind of currencies you should trade, what kind of asset you should trade or invest in. Mm -hmm. It also determine how long you should hold your trade. Should you become a short-term trader or long-term trader? This will make a big difference. So okay. if you have a conservative risk appetite, then you should focus more on the higher time frames. Then if you are a risk taker, then you can focus more on the shorter time frames. Then you can 
so-called Nick more trades. Right. But what I find is that long-term trading, this is just my bias, okay? Long-term trading is less stressful and also more rewarding and more profitable and allows you to have a life. So if, I've, if I'm to choose and go back to 10 years ago, when I first started trading, I would go for long-term trading all the way. Oh, really? Okay. That, I think a, a, a beginner would uh, take a lot from that, considering I think uh, when I know when I was a beginner, I jumped straight into sort of lower time frame stuff because yeah. I saw every, I saw all the movement, you know. Um, so I was very much drawn into all the the crazy moves, especially around news events. That's yeah. what I was that was largely driven to, and I think that was the same for a lot of beginners. But you would say if you were to go back you would do the higher time frame stuff. How high, how high a time frame would you go? Like, would you go daily time frame or, or higher? I would go, uh, because back then, uh, my mistake is that I started out being a day trader and scalper, which is right. a major mistake. I looked at the five minute, one minute time frame. So if I'm to go back, I would just start with bare minimum H1 and above. So bare minimum hourly time frame, then four hourly time frame daily weekly rather than like one minute five minutes like 15 minutes not worth it okay what would you say would you be able to sort of uh, tell us what your sort of favorite trading setup is on your higher time frame uh trading setup uh favorite trading setup i would say it would be the sentiment trade sentiment oh, okay trade. because when you understand sentiment analysis then it's easier for you to pick which country pair to trade, which market to trade, and the risk appetite of the market can actually tell you a lot about what currency is going to go up, what currency is going to go down. Yeah. Is the stock market going to go up or go down? Is gold going to go up or go down? So sentiment just helps you pick the right asset to buy and sell rather than technical analysis. Of course, I still use technical analysis. I use sentiment to generate a trade idea, mm-hmm. a trade idea, then after that, I would implement technical analysis to find a good level or a good time to enter the trade and also to take my profits and also where to cut my losses. That's where technical analysis comes in. Because yeah. for fundamentals, like sentiment and news, it doesn't tell you where should you put your stop loss or where should you put your target price. Only the charts can tell you that. But fundamentals can tell you... Uh, can give you good ideas as to what to buy and sell. So fundamentals gives me an idea. Technicals gives me the entry point, take profit and stop loss. So this is my, I will say my overall strategy. It's like a top-down strategy. Mm-hmm. Top-down strategy. So fundamental sentiment intermarket analysis is on top. Okay, it's on top. Then after that, followed by technical analysis at the bottom. Then implement this two broad topics with good risk management and good trading psychology and a good trading plan, good trading journal, and then you're good to go. Yep. Okay. So would you say if a beginner was coming to the market today, would you say that they should go and learn fundamentals first, maybe? Over sort of charts? Because fundamentals is a lot about economics. Economics, it involves a lot of uh, economics knowledge like GDP, then CPI, then PPI. A lot of beginners, they don't know what are these things. Mm-hmm. So I would say for beginners, the best thing to learn is the first thing, the basics of the market that you are trading. Mm-hmm. For example, basics of Forex markets, how it works, what drives the market, or the basics of stock market if you are trading stocks. And then what drives the stock market, then the principles of stock market, all the Lingo, the stock market lingo, forex lingo, learn all that first, okay? All the basics yep. first. Then right after that, you can go into technical analysis, which is more simple to learn. So it wouldn't overwhelm you with super hard stuff like fundamentals, what is CPI, PPI, then what's trade balance. is a lot harder as, as compared to technical analysis. So you can learn technical analysis first. Then after that, go slightly a little bit harder, risk management. Learn, learn risk management along with trading psychology. Then after that, you can consider learning fundamental analysis. Actually not consider, you must learn fundamental analysis because 
nowadays markets are more globalized. They are more mm. globalized, so markets are interconnected with each other. When the stock market moves, it's going to drag one a few currency pairs to move along with it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of retail traders, beginner traders, they don't know this. And they trade in the little technical analysis bubble. That's why most of them lose money. Right. So if, you, if we want to trade just like the hedge fund traders and professional traders, we need to look at what they look at, which is fundamentals. Uh, a couple of months ago, in fact, last year, I spoke at two institutional traders events in Singapore. They talk about the same thing. Okay. Same thing all the time. Fundamentals, economic, central bank. For the whole day, I was just listening to, oh my God, central bank, economics indicator. <laughs> Not a single person talk about, okay, so so this uh, double top pattern, yeah. double bottom pattern. Not a single trader there talk about <laughs> candlestick chart pattern, MACD, RSI, CCI, all these indicator. Not a single person there talk about charts. Then I'm like, you know what? How come people are not learning this? Because mm. unfortunately nowadays on social media, anybody can teach trading. I and what gets the most views? Technical analysis videos, like high win rate strategy videos. So if you are a YouTuber, if you are in their place, you will also want to produce videos that gets you, gets you the most views, right? Mm -hmm. Even though you personally know that fundamentals are better for people. But if people are not watching your fundamental videos, yep. then it's kind of like a conflict of interest, should I? Make videos that get more views, but it's not the best for retail traders. Mm. Or should I just follow my heart and do fundamental videos that nobody watches? And then you're going to get burnt out mm. from doing those videos because you spend so much time and then nobody watches your fundamental videos. Most of my fundamental videos underperform all my candlestick chart pattern technical analysis videos. Oh, really? Yeah. It, so it's a set. I, I would say it's a set thing. I try to change the mindset of people, but yeah. I guess it will take time. I think there's definitely a bias towards technicals, isn't there? I think there's a, um, like you said, because it's so so easily sort of seen on YouTube, I think everyone goes, right, okay, well, I'll, I'll learn technicals first. When really, you know, I, I agree with, with you saying that you need to understand the fundamentals surrounding that market in the first place. Um, otherwise, like you said, you don't know how that, what drives that market importantly um, in order to even, you know, understand why, why the price has essentially moved in the first place. Um, so yeah, I think that's a, a really important point actually to bring back to anybody that's a beginner trader. They need to maybe consider looking into into both things. And you teach both things on your on your YouTube channel. Yeah, I teach both things. Okay, both so things. what what's your what's your YouTube channel called? Let's let, tell everybody where um, where they can find out about sort of what you're up to and and what you do. So my YouTube channel is called Karen Fu, K A R E N F O O. My name is easy to remember because the surname has become a meme this year. It's it become a meme. Is it become a meme? <laughs> Don't, do you know that Karen is a meme? Oh, meme the Karen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. I get you. <laughs> because I got this name when I was 18, which is super long time ago. Then two years ago, three years ago, when it became a meme, I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? <laughs> then I was like... That's why the second channel I told you before this is study with Britney. Then I told I tell people, you know what, my my stage name, so called stage name, mm. it's like you know Lady Gaga, she has a stage name, but her real name is not Lady Gaga. Yeah. Then I told, tell people, you know what, Karen Fu is my stage name, then my real name is Britney. Then like, <laughs> <and> that works. <laughs> so, so my okay, coming back to the question, first yeah. first channel is Karen Fu, then the second channel is study with Britney. Okay. okay. So like which one you want to follow? Okay, cool. That's great. That's great. I think we'll wrap it up there because you've gave us so much, so much information. That was absolutely, uh, absolutely brilliant. So thank you for joining me today, and uh, let's let's do this again in the future, and we'll we'll hopefully give some more uh, some more knowledge in the future. So thank you for joining me today, Karen. Yeah, thank you, John. Thank you, Blueberry. All right, see you. Bye. -bye. So I really hope you enjoyed this interview with Karen Fu. I think it's an amazing story we will hope to have her back on the channel very very soon 
and uh, if you did enjoy the video please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the youtube channel if you want to see more of this type of content thanks once again and uh, i will see you in the next video